Cutting out objects in Photoshop can be really difficult and frustrating, especially with the complex objects like trees, mountains, and clouds. Now, if you are a beginner, this can be really annoying. As there are so many different options for cutting stuff out, it's hard to know where to start. The good news is that there is a really fast and really easy trick for removing backgrounds in Photoshop. And I'm going to show you how to do it right now. Welcome everyone. Today I'm going to share with you the technique that I used to cut these mountains with these trees. I actually even cut this helicopter with it, the clouds, these islands with the water, uh, the lakes, all of the things that you see right here, I use this technique to cut. But before we start with the technique, there is some tip that I want to show you guys. First thing, go to Edit, References, and then click on the Transparency option. Now at this point, I assume you have the Photoshop in the dark theme. If you don't, you can go to the interface and select the dark theme from the color theme. Go back to the transparency. Now by default, you will find it like this. Now this is the pattern of the transparency. When you are working on a transparent picture, you will find this pattern on the background. To change it, go back to Edit, References, Transparency. Click on both of these two colors and pick the color from the background. On the brightness, you will find it's 10, make it 15 or 20. Do the same for the other color. Make sure they have the same value or the same brightness. Then click OK. And now we have the transparent pattern or the transparent background as one dark color. I will tell you why I did that in a minute. Now I'm going to start explaining the technique. By this point, I assume you already know about the color channels method of cutting the objects. It is when you go to the color channels and you find the channel with the most contrast between the subject that you want to cut and the background. Now this is going to be the same, but it's going to be faster and you can see what you are cutting in a live action or in a live view. Now in our first example, which is this cloud stock image, and by the way, all of the stock images that I use in this tutorial, the links of are going to be in the description down below. For the clouds, we are not going to use the color channels because in the most cases where you use the clouds, you are going to use them as black and white. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to click and hold shift control U to turn the image to black and white. Next, I'm going to click and hold control and then click on L key. That will bring the levels menu and then I'm going to create a very strong contrast between the clouds and the background. Now I'm going to click two times on the layer. I'm going to use the blend if in the gray mode. Now I'm going to click and hold on this slide and take it to the right side. This will remove all of the dark areas on the image. I'm going to stop where I can see this background start to vanish. Just like that. But you will realize that the edges of the clouds are too hard or too sharp. To soften them, you can click and hold Alt and then take the slide to the right side. Now we have a smoother edges. Click OK, right click on the layer and convert it to smart object, then right click again and then rasterize the layer. Now we have the image as a PNG or a transparent clouds. Click and hold Ctrl G to duplicate it three times and then merge them together. Now the reason why I did that is because in most cases where you use the blend if, you are going to see through the clouds. So I find it useful to duplicate them three times and then merge them together. After you do, you can erase all of the uh, areas that you don't need on the subject that you just cut. And now you can control C and control V, copy and paste that cloud on your artwork and you will find it's a transparent 
objects. For this tree stock image, I'm going to show you one of the cones of this technique. Let's go to the channels and start looking for the channel with the most contrast between the tree and the background. It's going to be the blue channel. But the problem is that the tree trunk is not dark or black. And this is going to give us a problem while trying to cut the tree. Now, fortunately for us, this problem has two solutions. Solution number one is to go back to the layers and duplicate the layer and hide this one at the bottom. Go back to the channels and select the blue channel and then click on Ctrl L. Add a contrast between the tree and the background. If you see these white spots left on the trunk, you can choose the brush, a hard brush, and a black color, and 100% flow and opacity, and start paint on the trunk. You can take your time in this process, but because it's a tutorial, I'm going to skip this part. We go back to the image, and you will realize that this trunk now is more yellowish. The reason why is because we added black on the blue channel. And the yellow is the opposite of the blue. So if you make the areas dark on the blue channel, it's going to be yellow. But this is not a problem. I click two times on the layer and then I go to the blue channel and I start to take the blues from the background. And again, this is one of the pros of having a one dark color for the transparent background. You can see the white strokes that the cut leaves on the tree. We can start sliding till it's gone and then we can start to soften the cut by clicking at the holding alt and then taking the slide to the left side. Click OK and then right click on this image or this layer and convert it to smart object and then restorize it. Then click and hold control till you can see that square and then click on the layer to select it and you are going to use it as a mask for the first layer. Now, you will realize that there is bluish strokes on the edges of the tree. The reason why is bluish now because on the second layer, we turn them to yellow by adding the darkness on the blue channel. But now on the first layer, they are going to be back to their original color. I have a video on this channel showing you how to get rid of these bluish strokes. For the solution number two is duplicate the layer and do the same steps. Convert the layer to smart objects and rasterize it. Then show the first layer add a mask to it and convert it to black and with a brush and white color you can paint back the areas that were gone on the selection. The third example is going to be this fire image. I'm going to the color channels and I'm going to see what channel has the most contrast between the fire and the background. Now I can see it's the red without going to the green and the blue and that's of course because the fire is red. I'm going to click two times on the layer. I'm going to the blend if the red channel. And I'm going to take this slide from here and start sliding it till it's touching the fire edges. And when it does, I'm going to click and hold Alt and take the half of the slide to the right side. I'm going to click OK and then I'm going to right click on the layer, convert to smart object and then right click again and restorize it. Now again click and hold Ctrl G to duplicate it three times and merge them. Then with the eraser you can erase all of these spots that you don't need. Now this fire is ready to use on your images. And if you want to select the smoke instead, we can do it by choosing the blue channel because it has the most contrast between the smoke and the background. And we can use the red channel to get rid of the fire. 
and just like that we selected the smoke. For the fourth example, I'm going to use one of the mountain stock images that I used for this artwork. This one is going to be a little bit more complicated. The reason why is because I cut the mountains individually and then I cut the trees by their own. I will show you how. First, I click on the layer and I click and hold Ctrl G to duplicate it. Now, of course, the color channel is going to be the blue because in most of the images that has the trees and leaves, it's going to be blue channel. So I'm going to click two times and I'm going to the blue channel. I'm going to take the blue from the background. I'm going to stop where the selection starts to hit the trees. And then I'm going to click and hold Alt and take half of the slide to the left side. I'm going to restore some of the details on the edges of the trees, just like that. Now I have managed to cut these trees at the top, but I also want to cut these trees right here without the trees on the background. And to do that, I'm going to duplicate the layer one more time and hide this one. Then I'm going to click two times and then move that slide and start to move it till I can only see these trees without the trees in the background. Just like that. Then I'm going to click OK and then right click on the layer and convert it to smart object and then rasterize it. Do the same for this layer. Now duplicate it one time and then merge them together. Do the same to the layer at the top. Now I'm going to hide both of these two layers and show this layer right here. Now I'm going to use the classic way of cutting the objects. You can either use the select subject and select the mountain but that will select the trees. So I'm going to use the classic way, which is the lasso tool. And then I will start to select the mountain. And then when I get to the trees, I just pass them. Don't worry about the trees because we already cut them. Just focus on the edges of the mountain. Then click on select and mask. Make sure it's on the object aware and add radius. Just a bit of the radius and some of the feather and contrast. And then click OK. And add the mask to it. Then I'm going to show this layer right here. Then add a mask to it. And then click and hold Ctrl I to inverse the mask. With a brush, a soft brush, and a white color and 100% low and opacity, I'm going to paint on the trees at the top. And only I'm going to stop when I start to see the trees at the background start to show like that. Here where I stop. So it's going to be right here. And then I'm going to show this layer. And then add a mask to it. And invert the mask with the control I. And then start to paint the trees at the bottom. Now merge all the layers together and duplicate it one time and merge them. Now if you copy this layer to your artwork, you will find that it's ready to use. In this video, we only covered just one trick for removing backgrounds in Photoshop, but it doesn't stop there. Check out the next video where I will be showing you how to cut any object using the amazing select and mask tool. Now this one you don't want to miss. Check it out now.